When it comes to writing music, there are just so many things and devices that we could be thinking about to make our music the best it can be. But there's one thing that the greatest pieces of music in the world have in common that really make them memorable, that stand out, and really stick with us as the listener. So in this video, I wanna share with you what that device is and show you really how simple this all is. If you wanna check out my complete composing and orchestration workflow, I'd highly encourage you to check out my free workshop down below in the description box, and it'll walk you through step-by-step step how I go from that initial idea all the way to the polished final master, and basically the structure that I use for every single piece that I work on. So without further ado, let's kind of jump into this device. So the device that we're talking about here is super simple, and that is repetition. And a lot of uh, composers get a little bit hung up on this because they feel like they have to continue developing the piece all the time and add a complexity in order for it to not be too simple, right? But what a lot of us fail to realize is that it's not really the continuation and development of musical material all the time that's going to let musical material stick in our heads as the listener. It's actually the repetition of initially stated material that really helps burn that into our head. And I think we know this innately, right? So our favorite pieces of music, our favorite songs that we hear on the radio, one thing they all have in common is that they introduce a specific idea, maybe that's a motif, a, a, a phrase, a melody, and then they repeat that melody either identically or with slight variation. And it just allows that restatement to burn into our heads a little bit more. And it helps us to really grasp onto it so that when we walk away from that piece of music, we can hum that material, we kind of know what it sounds like because we've heard it multiple times. So to use a practical example, let's say John Williams' E.T. flying theme, right? So we have da 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 Now after that we have da 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 Those notes like the da 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 the second restatement is not identical to the first in terms of the notes, they're up a step, right? But the general structure, the rhythm is the same. And that's what makes it so important. So even just within the first like five seconds of this piece, da 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 there's that first statement. We repeat that statement, da 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 It allows the harmony to change underneath, but it also allows the story and the melody to kind of lift a little bit higher. So that in itself, that repetition makes it so catchy. And then afterwards we have that again, da 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 right? That's the third statement. Again, it's even higher, but then it goes down a little bit more. Da 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 Then the fourth time is not quite as similar to the first three. But what happens after these four phrases? Well, then we get that first statement back again at the very beginning. Do, 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 right? And this time it's in the strings an octave lower. So the energy is lowered a little bit, but it's the same musical material. So the very last note, that time it goes up instead of going down. But this overall second repetition of that main theme, all of those four phrases, that musical material is nearly identical to the first time. So John Williams really understands how to create themes that stick in our minds. You establish a theme, whether that's a period or a sentence form, then you can repeat that entire thing, either identically or with very slight variation, to really let that theme burn into our minds. And again, a lot of composers don't want to do this because they're afraid of letting ideas become stale. But I think, personally, I think that things only become stale if you repeat things a third time in the exact same way. So hearing something once and then hearing it again is what we should be doing most of the time, and that's very, very common. But if you want to repeat that exact same material a third time, I would recommend changing something up more. So maybe that's you changing up the direction of the melody, maybe you change up the chord progression, maybe you change the key, you modulate. All of those things can now introduce a new aspect to your melody. But if you're just keeping it the same three times in a row, four times in a row, that's when we start to get ear fatigue. So that's why in musical structure, you rarely see for example, three A's in a row, unless it's something like a theme in variations where you have, you know, A and then A prime and then A double prime, whatever, it changes a little bit each time, but it's the same theme. Otherwise, um, you, it's very common to see like A, B, A, right? You never, like you'll see double A's together because that's the restatement of the main theme. But then after that, there's usually gonna be some different section. Maybe that's a bridge or some sort of development or a completely new thing altogether. It gives our ears a little bit of a break. But I would recommend at least repeating the theme once if you can, because again, that's what's going to 
establish that theme more in your listeners' minds and don't shy away from it. Um, that's something I personally do all the time is I'll repeat my melodies at least once at the very beginning. Then I'll have some musical material that's different in the middle. Maybe it's a B section, then a C section, but then more often than not, I'll bring back the A section one last time at the very end, just to wrap it all in a nice little bow. And you know, that restatement of the theme um, lets the listener kind of walk away um, you know, reinforcing it in their heads. So we can see really how simple this is, right? Repetition is something that um, I think has stood the test of time and will continue to stand the test of time because that's just how our brains work. When we hear something, it's new material the first time, but when we repeat that material, it reinforces it and helps us to really grab onto it and remember it for a long time. Then when you kind of uh, develop it and introduce new material after that, that that's totally fine, but at least at some point you want to repeat that musical material at least once. I hope that made sense. And again, if you want to check out my complete composing workflow, then check out my free workshop down below in the description. It'll go through step-by-step step how I go from the very initial melodic idea all the way to the polished final master step-by-step. Step. And I'll show with you, uh, I'll show you my um, virtual orchestration roadmap as well, because a lot of people are interested in how I actually, you know, use my sample libraries, what I think about when working in my projects. So I cover all of that inside my workshop and you can get free access to that down below in the description. If you want to check out another video helping you on your musical journey, click right here. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you very soon.